We're downtown Gilroy at the Gilroy Garlic Fun Run. And we are going to look at some beautiful cars with flames on them. In this show, we'll be looking at professionally done cars. Then we are going to go to a body shop and actually paint flames on a children's toy, a wagon. And then we're going to head for a nightclub and we're going to look at some exotic cars that are stored there. <laughs> Creativity. I'm Carol Peters, and today we're on location at Hogue Brothers Collision Center in Gilroy, California. You've all seen the beautiful flames on professionally done cars, and this is where some of them are done. And today we're going to take a look at the pros and how they do, a, a, actually not a car today, we're going to do kids' toys, and it's going to be totally fun. With me I have two former students, of course. And I'm going to have them introduce themselves. My name is Dominic Boffa. We've had Hogue Brothers family owned business here in Gilroy for over 30 years. Another shop in Hollister. And uh, this is our painter, Daniel Parker. Hi, I'm Daniel Parker, and I'm a professional painter. And we'll be doing the flames today. And uh, I just want to say, because Daniel is very modest, he is the man of flames. Freehand. Very good, very good artist. Thank you. And you need a good artist. If you're going to put flames on your car, you need a good artist. Painters can paint, but only artists can lay down these flames freehand in the styles that you see here and make them come out really nice, something that you know somebody would spend a lot of money for. Yeah. So what, what do we have in front of us? Well, this little wagon is a radio flyer wagon we, we did for my daughter's first birthday it's a couple years, about a year and a half ago. And you can get it any Toys R Us store. You can get a radio flyer wagon, Target, online, different places. And it'll come in a box and pieces. It'll come as a, as a little red pan. And you can go ahead and sand a, sand a wagon down, paint it a color of your choice, and get you know black wagon, white wagon, red wagon, however you want to do it. And then you can do a flame pattern or 
different types of scallops or any kind of stripes that you can conjure up in your mind and, and, and actually create a stencil and lay them on, onto a wagon and, and do a professional job yourself with some of the techniques that we're gonna be showing here today. And the thing is, um, Dominic told me to go to West Coast Wagons and they start selling um, the wagons there for $650. Donald Trump, Johnny Depp, Gwyneth Paltrow, Ben Affleck, you name it. They all have wagons for their kids mm -hmm. and they're all different and they're all darling. So when I saw that, I'm thinking, I just had a little grandbaby, Elizabeth Jean, uh, premature. So I have two grandchildren and I wanted a wagon for them. So I came to the pros and show us what you're doing for me. Well, Carol came by the shop and we have this uh, radio flyer that she purchased. Like I said, you, you, buy, it, you buy it in pieces. And then uh, she, she chose a yellow color. So we, we, we turned the red wagon into yellow. And then once that paint was all dried, we sanded that paint down with the, with the light scuff pad to, to remove the gloss off that yellow paint. And then we went ahead and uh, applied a flame pattern onto, the, onto this wagon and some colors of her choice. And uh, did an orange with a metal flake. <laughs> and I uh, think it came out really good. I so love we're, it, we're I gonna, love We're it. gonna show you how to get that looking like that and how you can do it yourself. And Daniel, why don't you step back and you can start doing the, uh, the masking off. And as you do that, um, as you get back there. I got this wire. I bought these little license plates. They're gonna go on the back. And this is gonna be their Christmas present. So I'm totally excited. Cool little project. I know, I can't wait. And then after we get through uh, masking this off, I'm gonna show you how you can do it real, real easy at home. And I, I'm gonna show you how to do this on a surfboard, okay? So, Daniel, why don't you get started? We're coming in here now, and Dan's already got um, about half of this flame pattern masked off on this wagon here. And he could just do a real good job just freehanding these flames like you can see. Um, he doesn't need a stencil or anything like that. He's got, it, he's got it all up here, and he pulls it out and puts it right down like, like somebody would do with a, with a pad and pen. He can do it with this fine line masking tape and put some really nice tails and loops and make a real nice. That looks great, Daniel. Um, if you're not an artist and you can't just freehand this, you can go online and you can get a, a pattern, anything that you want, and you can copy it off and you're ready to go. So it's awesome. You're doing a wonderful job. And this is something that the average person cannot do. So um, if you want a professional job, I suggest you get a professional to do the job. All right, now I'm gonna show you how you can do a simple stencil at home with very, very easy equipment. So you don't need to have the professional eye and you can do it yourself. Before I even get started, I wanna make sure that we talk about safety. Because what I'm using is uh, spray paint, which you have to be 21 or over. So if you have um, a project for you, you were doing for your children, that's wonderful. Um, the safety glasses, and these are called stylish safety glasses. <laughs> and these are just to protect your eyes from any spray that come up, okay? Um, also a mask, because when you're spraying, there's a lot of um, spray that just is floating around and you don't want to breathe it in. I also use gloves because I just don't like it getting all over my hands and um, it just protects. So those are pretty much the equipment. I'm using an X-Acto blade, some manila. This is like in a manila folder that you have your files in and I just taped a bunch of them together. Actually, this is tag board an X-Acto knife, masking tape, and spray paint. And you can do this at home with these simple, simple, uh, small amount of equipment. So what I'm gonna do is we took um, a pattern of the surfboard that you saw standing, and I'm going to go ahead and cut around all of these lines to make my stencil. I'm gonna make sure that I do not throw any piece away because everything is important, and I'm not gonna cut through edges. So say I'm gonna start here and I'll just take my blade and I will go around and I will cut so that these all will come out and save every single piece. So I'm not gonna take the time to cut it all out, but I have a cardboard underneath so that of course it doesn't puncture your table or anything like that. 
So all these are individual pieces, and this is the back. I've taken tape, and this is my invention, and it works really, really well. Uh, Double-sided tape is a little bit too wide. I just take the tape, and I just start to twist it. And I twist until I get a little line like this, okay? And this is really neat because you can make it as skinny as you want to get around these tiny flames. So wherever I am not going to spray, I tape around that, that shape. So I've got my tape, and I just start taping around the pieces that are going to stay. And this is the piece that's going to come out. This will be the part that is going to be shot, okay, with my color. So I have to remove this. And sometimes it gets kind of tricky. Uh, there you go. So that's what I'll be shooting with color. You can see what it's going to look like right there. So now I have to take this and put it over here. Now look how cool that looks. Ah. Can you see how nice that is? We're gonna shoot this so that it'll have the flames coming down, then we'll take everything off, okay? So it'll be like really, really nice. So I've got mine masked off. How about you, Daniel? I'm ready. Looks great, it looks great. So we both are in the same place right now, but you're gonna go into the spray booth. So while you go in there, maybe I can start using my spray can here. Okay. Okay, and then we'll go back and forth and we'll see how this works. Okay, if I'm gonna shoot this, I don't wanna get on there. This little guy right here is a brand new kind of spray can. For me it is anyway. And it, you can dial it and you can get a wide spray or you can get a, a narrow spray. You point that away from you, okay? Make sure that when you're messing with it, you're not gonna be shooting yourself. If I start spraying and I get to here and I go like this, this is the wide spray. Notice I've got a big clump right here. I really don't want that on my surfboard. If I dial this across this way, I'm gonna get a, a different type of spray. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start with the yellow. I'm gonna start out here and I'm gonna mist it this way. And notice I'm just putting a, a light coat at first. And I, I don't know what to expect because this has a color already down. So you know when colors mix, you're gonna get color mixing. So I have no idea, you know. I just knew that there are warm colors down at the bottom and I was gonna go with warm colors because I know I'll have a nice result. I won't end up with dark brown or gray or something like that. Now we're at the spray booth and Daniel and Dominic are inside and they're doing the professional spraying on the wagon. So I'm gonna let them take it away from here. got a nice silver base coat laid down over that flame pattern now so what he's going to do is he's going to put a, an actual metal flake material on top of that if you start with the metal flake material right away it takes way too much material to cover that and you're going to have a big chunky mess when you're when you're done so the best thing is for this application is he gets a silver base coat silver metallic base coat and lays it down on top. So now you got the silver down, and then he's gonna go over next with some, with some flakes, and then you'll really see that, that chunky metallic, silvery, glittery pattern go down without having to use too much of it and creating too much uh, film thickness that you're gonna be fighting later on. So now he's putting on the metallic. This is a, this is a metal flake, and the metal flake is suspended in a, in a resin so you could, so you could apply it. You can probably pick it up on the camera. You can pick up the glittery of it, the glitteriness now. 
You probably put a couple coats of that, and that's all you need. You don't need very much of it. Once you have that silver base down, you come back with the flakes, just like that. And now you got a really, really cool metal flake pattern. So now Dan's got an orange, it's an orange candy concentrate material. And you just put a real thin coat of this. Thin coats, as you can see. He's putting it on more dry than he's putting it on wet. Is that it, Dan? Just that? That's all you need? Yeah, just a couple of coats of that. And now it's nice, a nice uniform orange color on there. And uh, we're going to let that sit up for about 5, 10 minutes and let that paint flash off so it's dry. And then we can go ahead and unmask everything and you'll be able to see that orange flame on that yellow background. It should look really nice. So here we go. Start here and bring it on up. And then I'm going to do the tips of the flames red. All right, I'm gonna hit a little harder down here. I think that's okay, don't you? Yeah, it looks good. Okay, we're ready to rock and roll, but I can't take the stencil off right now because you can see it's still pretty wet right in here. So if I pop that up and get all that feathering around. The wet paint's around. gonna start moving around. Yeah, so maybe we can go take the stencil off of yours. <laughs> So now you got a real nice contrast from the orange metal flake to the solid yellow wagon. It'll look real cool. We got a couple more steps we got to do. We're going to give it a little depth and do a little drop shadow so it looks like that flame pattern is just uh, suspended on top of that wagon. So that still needs to dry for a little bit before we can go back and uh, handle it a little bit further and get our, uh, get our drop shadow on there. Okay, I've sprayed the surfboard now with the yellow, the orange, and the red. And it's still a little bit wet, so I don't want to pull a stencil off right yet. So we're going to go behind us, and there's a bike, an awesome bike with flames, and also a guitar. And Dominic's going to let us know how they did that. Well, I can tell you a little bit about the guitar. It's my dad's guitar, and he did it. It's a custom guitar from, from top to bottom. And he wanted to be here today to, to, sh to show it off. Um, he's not feeling real well, so I'll have to, I'll have to fake it here. Um, it's a Fender, Fender guitar, custom from, from top to bottom. It's got a real nice flame job that was put on it. This, this was done a couple of years ago. Um, it's got a lot of the orange, a lot of the orange. It doesn't have the metal flake in it because we wanted to do something that when it was all done, they could put a lot of clear coat on it and sand it and polish it. And if you feel this, it just feels like a, a piece of glass. You can't feel any of those lines or any of the, a lot of different taping that was involved in this. And this actually started out with a blue black ground. And then after they put the, the blue down, they got an oxyacetylene torch and were able to create the, the smoke that comes from that torch and capture that smoke onto the, onto the blue metallic and onto the neck of this guitar just to give it some, some style. Kind of a popular uh, custom technique from a long time ago that he wanted to bring back into this guitar here. Um, like I said, it's all custom. And then what do you have here? This is, a, this is another customer's bike that, that we did this about a, about a year ago, maybe a little less than a year ago. A uh, customer actually, he bought this bike with a little bit of damage on it. Mm -hmm. And it had, it was a black bike with blue flames when he bought it. And uh, I think somebody had dropped it or there was some damage mm -hmm. to the tank. So we brought it in, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, he was looking to get it repainted. He liked the style of it. He liked the, he liked the blue on black. It didn't have any, any pinstripes around it, so it was more of a, a basic flame job. And when we went ahead and made the repairs and, and reapplied the flames, we kind of talked him into doing a pinstripe around it. Yeah. So right. from, from far away in the evening time, you can still see the flame job that's on this bike, oh. being that it's got the little silver, silver pinstripes on it. It's beautiful. And then if you really take a close look, there are drop shadows. So the flames look like they're actually going under and over. Weaving in and out of each other. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. All right, now the appreh apprehension is high. I'm just gonna take and lift these very gently off. And we're gonna slide it toward Daniel. So, oh wow. That's looking good. Okay, so now what, what we have is we have some overspray right in here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do a, a, a drop shadow first in a black. 
and then put a cobalt blue line around it. And if you don't know how to freehand the line, you can actually get that tape, the colored tape, and just put it around the edge. So, good. Almost there. Almost there. Thank you guys very much. And now we have to see the wagon. Sure. All right, this is the finished side. Yeah. So this is kind of what I'm going to do to the, the um, surfboard. surfboard. Take a little up. What I'll do is I'll put that stencil back on it. I'll spray a little bit of black. And notice, you don't go all the way around every side with the black. That's a secret. You pick one side, and then you just do the black there. And then at that point, you can, re coat you can clear coat the whole thing, get it nice and shiny. Like the, like the bike, if something, you know, kids end up spilling something on it, dropping a soda in there, you can clean it up and wipe it up and won't damage your artwork that you did. Great, great. Yeah. Well, I just want you to come over here. I want to thank everyone. I want to thank uh, Marilyn Abad Cardinelli, Joe Cardinelli, um, and the crew at Galvin College, and of course, Dominic Boffa. Very welcome. Danny Parker. And um, we will be taking a look at some classic cars as well in the show. So we want to say, ciao, ciao for now. now. <laughs>Welcome to Carol on Creativity. My name is Carol Peters, and we are out looking for adventure, heading out the highways, and we're at a private nightclub where wonderful, beautiful cars are stored, and we're going to talk to the guy that owns them and his wife and another friend of mine that is having a party tonight, and their birthday party for both of these guys. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Howdy, everybody. I'm Joe Carnaja. I'm too old to say how old I am, but uh, I want to wish my buddy happy birthday. Uh, I stopped ha uh, wishing myself happy birthday about 30 years ago. So here you go, Steve-O. But I'm going to say uh, happy birthday <laughs> to my little brother, Joe. Uh, I'm Steve Kurd, and this is my beautiful wife, Wendy. How did we meet, Steve? We actually met under very special circumstances. It had to do with a car. And in fact, that car is behind us now. It's a 1969 Jaguar XKE. We just call it the Per XKE. This, this actually was your car when you were probably about 20 years old. And I saw, I saw a picture of a beautiful 20 year old on a beautiful car and I said, I gotta have that car. And so, uh, so I actually uh, bought the car from Carol. Well, I grew up in a garage uh, with my dad, so I've always had uh, grease under my fingernails. But uh, I've always looked for cars that have something unique about them. They're a first model year, a late model year. Uh, from an unusual place, and so uh, we've got a number of those cars here. Now we're standing in front of Wendy's favorite car, and I'm going to have Wendy uh, just tell us what it is and what she likes about it. One word. Fast. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Steve will explain what makes this car unique and so coveted. So the same reason Wendy likes it, it's fast. Uh, this is a 1985 Testarossa. Uh, it's an early design by Pininfarina. Everybody knows this car. Um, every rock star had to have one in the 1980s. It came out in 85. This is the very first model year for this car. So when this car was first premiered, nobody had seen anything like this in, in the world. Uh, this is the 85, so it has what they call the flying driver's side mirror. This car has only one outside rear view mirror. It only, that car was only allowed to be manufactured in 85. The feds got involved and said, well, that's not very safe. You have to put a mirror on the other side. So if you ever see a Testarossa, one mirror on the driver's side, it's an 85. Uh, it's got a boxer 12-cylinder engine in the back, uh, which, was, uh, which Ferrari had pioneered a few years earlier. It's actually six cylinders uh, exactly opposed, 180 degrees apart. So that engine lays flat in the back. So if you follow one of these from behind, this is one of the widest cars you'll see. Uh, you will recognize this car from miles away because of the width in the back. The track in the back is wider than the track in the front, which is another unique aspect of the uh, Testarossa. So 1985, this car first hit the road. This one looks exactly the way it did when it was made. I think it's got uh, 11,000 miles, uh, 11,000 miles on it. Uh, and uh, my wife informs me this is the only 25-year-old redhead I can hang out with, the Testarossa. Now we're standing in front of Joe's favorite car, and it's the VET. This is kind of a rare Corvette. It's, uh, they didn't make very many of them. It's radio delete. It's not drilled for the sun visors or the top, soft top. It's got the uh, 283, 24 
solid lifter engine with a four-speed positive traction rear end, and uh, it's a pretty rare car. So uh, we found it. We were Steve's my buddy. We were looking on the internet, and we uh, seen this car in Alaska, and uh, Dennis had it. He was the original owner, and uh, had a frame off restoration, but it's only got like 50,000 original miles on it. Uh, it's original interior. Uh, they painted it. There's not a crack or a repair in the whole body. He's got pictures of it in the gel coat when it was stripped. So it's kind of a rare car. All right, now we're in front of Hannah's favorite car, the Camaro. And Hannah's standing right next to me, and she's going to just give us a little experience with this car, Hannah. Um, my experience with this car was driving it to Gilroy High Senior Prom in 08 and um, it looked amazing with my little black dress and my date's red tie and it was fun. It's a fast car. Well thank you guys very much. Uh, we're going we're gonna to join the party. People are starting to come and we just want to thank you very, very much for letting us come into your private nightclub and just hang out with your beautiful cars, your beautiful family, and um, we appreciate it very much. Okay, we have finished the surfboard that we I actually started spray painting at Hogue Brothers. Check it out. I am so excited about it. We took the spray cans, sprayed the yellow, sprayed up with the orange, then shot it hard with the, with the actual red, and then cleaned it up and this is actually pinstriping tape that's just put around the flames to give it that nice crisp edge. This I did on my computer, if you can believe that or not. I picked out the O'Neill kind of uh, font and actually printed it on some paper that you peel off and it's transparent, sticky, and you just stick it down right on the board. So this is going to go over my grandson's bed. Now this is the Ho Brothers. You've got to check this out. This is state of the art. It's better than anything I've seen online. Look at that paint. It's just like diamonds. So that's his Christmas present from Noni. I love you.